Good evening, everyone. My name is Janet Forrest. I'm one of the adult program coordinators at the Nantucket Athenaeum. And tonight we have Alice from Health and Imperatives. She's going to be talking to us tonight about um, setting attainable nutrition goals. So I'm going to pass it over to Alice Townsend Williams. Welcome. Great. Thank you so much for having me. This is a lot of fun. Um, a nice change of pace from my usual days. Um, so I see a couple of familiar names out there. Hi, guys. Um, it's nice to connect again, um, but if you're not familiar, uh, if we don't know each other, my name is Alice. I'm a registered dietitian. Um, I work at Health Imperatives for the WIC program. Um, and if you don't know WIC, it stands for Women, Infants, and Children. And we provide uh, free nutritious foods, nutrition counseling, breastfeeding support and community referrals to families with pregnant women, postpartum women, infants, and uh, children under five. Um, so it's a really great program. It allows me to do one-on-one -on -one counseling. I'm also a lactation counselor. So I do a little bit of that at work too. Um, and also sometimes get to do fun classes like this. Um, I prefer to do them in person, but this is good for now. Um, so, yeah, let's get started. I wanted to talk about um, kind of healthy eating in the new year and kind of goal setting with nutrition. All right, and feel free to ask questions as we go along. Um, I'm gonna try to breeze through the nutrition part. I could blab on about nutrition forever um, so we can get to the recipe, but all right, so nutrition is really confusing. <laughs> I'm gonna start with that, um, especially in January after the new year. Um, we are just inundated with messages about um, how to eat healthy, how to lose weight. Um, we hear about all these different diets, um, a lot of conflicting messages, and it's just very overwhelming and confusing. Um, so my goal is to kind of simplify things a little bit. Um, and I really like some of these old ads. Um, so it seems like nowadays the nutrition and weight loss and wellness industry is huge. Um, I think it's estimated at $72 billion in America alone. Um, and with social media, it's really hard to avoid these messages. Um, but uh, monetizing our health and our weight has always been a thing. Um, so here's some fun, crazy old diet ads that I wanted to share. Um, we have the sexy pineapple diet. I don't know much about it, but I'm guessing it's um, some diet made up around eating lots of pineapple. Um, of course, we have Metrical and meal replacement shakes. Um, that they are comparing to a steak, not exactly appealing to have a bright pink liquid in your bowl. Um, <laughs> even promoting cigarettes to, <laughs> to lose weight, um, not exactly health promoting. Um, vitamin donuts, interesting. Um, and then finally, eating sugar to get slim. So nutrition messages are always changing often contradicting each other, and especially in January, they're everywhere. So how are we supposed to know what to eat um, if we're always hearing different things, if it's always changing? Um, so the good news is that these fads are always gonna be there and always changing. However, um, the nutrition science and our understanding of our bodies and health and nutrition doesn't change that quickly. Um, we're always learning more um, about how to better nourish ourselves and care for our bodies, but it's pretty simple and it builds upon itself. Um, so all these crazy zigzags um, that we hear in social media and advertisements um, are really the very lucrative um, wellness industry trying to pick our pockets for some, some money. Um, so today I'm just gonna go over some simple nutrition guidelines, nothing crazy. Um, and these trusted, true um, guidelines that won't change. <laughs> um, I'm also gonna talk about some things to keep in mind when setting nutrition goals. Um, January is a great time to 
set goals and um, really prioritize your happiness and your health. So I'll talk about some ways that you can do that. Um, I'm also gonna provide some resources for healthy eating. Um, there's a lot of information online and I'll offer some trusted resources that I like. Um, and finally, I'm gonna share a recipe. Any questions before we move on? All right. Um, so a healthy diet doesn't look the same for two people. Uh, we all eat very differently for a lot of reasons. Um, there's a lot that goes into our food choices. Um, our cultures, our health, um, our family history, our preferences, so what we like. Um, so there's really no one size fits all diet. Um, and I also want to say, um, this is just kind of general healthy eating uh, advice. If you do have a medical condition or, um, you know, something like a history of eating disorders or anything like that, definitely talk to your doctor or dietitian um, to get specific eating advice. But this is just general healthy nutrition. And I also wanted to point out that it's great that we focus on nutrition and what we're eating this time of year, but it's just a piece of the puzzle. Um, it's just one modifiable behavior um, and a whole slew of things that can affect our health. Um, all right, so now we're gonna get to my simple guidelines. Um, if you've taken a class with me before, you probably know that I love these three words, variety, balance, and moderation, and I throw adequacy in there. Um, and just thinking about these three simple words um, gives a good framework for how to eat healthy. Um, so when I think about variety, I think about different food groups, different colors, um, getting different things on your plate because all different foods have different nutrients. Um, so, and then balance is getting the right proportions. So if you have say a stir fry with rice and broccoli and chicken and peppers, that's a good variety. It has different food groups, different colors. Um, but say it's two cups of rice, um, one teeny piece of chicken, and one piece of broccoli, and one little pepper. Um, that's not really balance. Um, so putting those two together uh, will create a healthy plate. Um, and then finally, moderation and adequacy, which kind of go together. Um, eating enough, but not too much. Um, kind of understanding uh, what your body needs to fuel yourself for the day. Um, so I like to keep those words in mind. And then to keep it simple, uh, we've kind of ditched the food pyramid. Uh, too much counting, uh, too much to think about. So the plate is an easier way to guide your meal choices. So a lot of different organizations have their own version of this plate. So the American Diabetes Association, um, the USDA, which creates our guidelines, um, Harvard School of Public Health, all have their own version of kind of a healthy eating plate, but they all look really similar. <laughs> so the general guidelines are that half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables. Um, preferably those non-starchy vegetables. So variety of color, um, carrots, tomatoes, lettuce, um, things like that. Um, and trying to get lots of color in there for variety. Um, we recommend that a quarter of your plate is grains, preferably those whole grains. Um, so things like brown rice, whole wheat pasta, um, even Corn is actually a grain. Um, so those starchy vegetables will also fit in that grain category. Um, and the role of the grains is really to give you energy in the form of carbohydrates, which give you calories. And then finally, we want a quarter of our plate to be protein, um, preferably those lean proteins like fish, chicken, um, non-animal based proteins. So beans, nuts, seeds, tofu. Um, or lean cuts of meat. So this is just um, a general idea. So when you look down at your plate or bowl, just think about 
Are there lots of fruits and veggies? Is there a lean protein? Are there some carbohydrates? And then finally, a couple things to keep in mind are to choose healthy fats. Um, I could talk all day about healthy fats, but here's a nice little picture depicting some of my favorites. We have avocado, salmon, some kind of vegetable oil, and some nuts. So the healthier fats are typically um, from plants or fish, and they're full filled with lots of unsaturated fats and tend to be liquid at room temperature. That's a good guideline. Um, the fats to limit are the ones that come from animals. So like chicken skin or really fatty meat cut or butter. Um, they're not bad. Uh, they just don't have that really good for your heart properties that the unsaturated fats do. Um, choose healthy beverages. Beverages often can contain a lot of sugar. Um, so keeping an eye on what you drink, um, choosing lots of water, seltzer water, tea, coffee, um, or even milk are good beverage choices. And just limiting your sugar sweetened beverages like your um, you know, sweetened tea or soda. Um, keeping an eye on your sugar and salt intake. So um, you can have a lot more control of this when you cook at home. Uh, it's a great time to cook at home during COVID. I'm sure um, a lot of people have new hobbies of cooking and trying to explore, experiment in the kitchen. Um, and finally, avoid restrictive diets. So if you cut whole food groups out of your diet, you're just going to crave it and want it more. Um, and food should be fun and nourishing in all ways. So if you love chocolate, eat your chocolate. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna talk about setting nutrition goals. Um, so my first tip in setting your nutrition goals is to try and make them not weight focused. Um, so many people try to make weight loss um, one of their new year's resolutions or a nutrition goal, but the reality is that's an outcome. That's not really something you can wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to lose weight today. You can't really put that on a, a checklist. Um, so try to uh, choose things that are behaviors that you could put on a checklist. Um, and it's, there's lots of ways you can improve your health if you don't lose weight. Um, focusing on weight can be really discouraging. Um, distracting and can often lead us to unhealthy behaviors. So focusing on health instead of weight um, can be a really healthy, helpful way to set goals. Um, I also recommend starting small. So don't expect to completely change your diet overnight. Um, start with really simple changes. Um, and then finally, try adding instead of subtracting. So don't take away those foods that you love but add some really nourishing, nutrient-dense foods to your diet. Um, so I'm gonna give you some examples. These are ones that I'm actually working on. Um, so bring a healthy snack to work every day. Um, I find I get really hungry when I'm in the office um, and I don't bring snacks. And sometimes I uh, go to a vending machine or find some candy in the bottom of my bag and don't make the best food choices. Um, but knowing that I have a nice balanced snack with me, um, gives me energy, helps me stay focused at work. Um, I'm not the best water drinker. So I have a goal to drink water with every meal and carry a water bottle around with me. Um, so far so good. This guy right here. <laughs> um, choosing a whole grain with dinner five nights a week. Um, it's not a bad idea to add some numbers to your goals so you can, um, really benchmark them and um, you know, it's something you can check off. So at the end of the week, did I, I can think about how many times did I have a whole grain with dinner? Um, and then try a new recipe. Nutrition can be fun. So I like to add cooking or gardening or some other element instead of just thinking about nutrients. Um, so keep nutrition fun. All right, now I'm just gonna share some food resources. First of all, um, if you or any friends or family members 
need any help with food, uh, there's lots of help on this island and elsewhere. Um, so here are just some organizations that um, are helpful to islanders in accessing food. And then, like I said before, there's lots of information online that is not necessarily true. <laughs> um, so really be careful where you get your nutrition information. Um, uh, these are some resources that I trust. Um, the Health and Human Services Dietary Guidelines. Um, you can find the full dietary guidelines and all the details. They just released um, the 2020 guidelines last year. And new to that are dietary guidelines for pregnancy. So in the past, they didn't have very specific guidelines for women who are pregnant. So that's kind of a fun new addition to it. Um, I also really like the Harvard School of Public Health. This is their image on the side. That's their version of the healthy eating plate. Um, and they have some really good resources um, and on very simple, attainable um, nutrition guidelines. And then finally, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics has a great website with some good nutrition information. Um, and if you're looking for recipes, um, these are some great ones. Old Ways has a ton of whole grain recipes. It's run by the Whole Grain Council. So if you want to learn how to cook new whole grains, things like amaranth or sorghum or some crazy new grains, um, there's some really great recipes on there. And they also have a lot of different ethnic cuisines. Um, so like African cuisines, Caribbean, all over the world. Um, cooking Matters is really good for cooking on a budget and really easy recipes. And then the Diabetes Food Hub, um, not just for diabetics or pre-diabetics, they have some great kind of just balanced, easy, moderate co carbohydrate meals. So those are some websites that I like for recipes. And finally, um, we're gonna make one of my favorite recipes. I know Becky has made this before with me, um, but there's so many different ways you can do it. I did it, this recipe is a little different than the one I made before. Um, but mac and cheese is ultimate winter comfort food for me. Um, and I love this recipe because you can really make it your own. So the recipe I have here is like the ultimate healthified one. So I made all the additions um, to optimize the nutrient dense ingredients, um, but you can sort of adjust it and adapt it to whatever you and your family like. Um, so the first ingredient is a pound of whole wheat pasta. So that's my whole grain for the night. I can uh, check off tonight as I had a whole grain for dinner. Um, whole wheat pasta, um, it's hard to find the mac macaroni shape, but the penne, you can find it stop and shop. I use this one a lot. And the reason we like the whole grain is it has a lot more fiber. It also has um, more vitamins, minerals, um, and protein. So if we compare the nutrient facts of this to just a regular refined pasta, um, there's two grams of fiber in here compared to five grams in one serving. Um, so it's more than twice the fiber. Um, these have also become really popular. Um, this is a chickpea pasta, and this is a lentil and carrot pasta. Um, they're pretty good. Um, they tend to be really high in protein um, and also high in fiber. Um, so if you're willing to try a different kind of grain, um, these can be kind of fun. So I just went with the whole wheat pasta um, and I already cooked it. So now I'm just gonna start with the sauce. Bring it over to my stove. Any questions right now? So I'm going to take away the recipe um, so we can see you better. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there you go. Perfect. And if you email me a copy of that recipe, I'll um, yeah. share it with everyone. Yeah, definitely. And I can email you those um, links as well. Yeah. Perfect. So I have my stove on and a big pot. I already cooked the pasta. Um, another thing I like about this recipe is you can make it with just one pot. So I have like no dishes to do after this. Um, and I'm just going to start with a roux. 
So a lot of people think you have to use butter for a roux, but you could actually use any kind of fat. So I'm using olive oil, um, which is a really heart healthy oil. Um, really you just need a fat and a flour. Um, about two tablespoons of each. And the color is going to be a little different from your traditional um, butter and flour roux. But it's still going to bubble and darken a little bit. And the important part is to kind of cook that flour a little um, and to create this base that's going to thicken up for our sauce. I'll let that cook for a minute or so. You. I need like an aerial camera for this. <laughs> so it's starting to thicken up a bit. You can tell it has kind of a an olivey green color. Go figure. Um, all right. And I can smell that the flour is cooking a bit. Um, and then I'm just going to slowly add in the milk. Um, I have about two cups milk here. Um, I'm doing a lower fat milk. If you have someone in your family who needs added calories, who has trouble gaining weight or keeping on weight, you could do a whole milk. Um, choosing a lower fat milk will obviously uh, make the dish lower in calories and higher in protein. Uh, when you skim off the fat, you're left with more protein in the milk. So I'm sort of whisking this as I add it in. that thicken up a bit and I'm going to add my spices. So I'm keeping it really simple with just some dried spices. Um, just a little bit of salt and if you're watching your sodium intake you can wait till after the wait till the cheese is added before you add the salt so you can really taste it. Um, and tell if you need to add any, or you could just skip it. There's enough sodium in the cheese and naturally in the milk um, that it might work for you. Um, just a little bit of ground mustard. This one has not been opened yet. I'm stealing my mom's spices. Um, I like to cook in her kitchen because <laughs> uh, it's nicer looking and it doesn't make a mess of mine, so. Don't tell her. All right, about half a teaspoon of mustard. Um, you could use like fresh Dijon mustard as well. I often do that. Um, a little bit of garlic powder, about the same amount. And the same amount of paprika. I'm also gonna add some pepper as well. This recipe is like a spruced up Annie's mac and cheese. Um, so I'm doing it stovetop style. I also have directions for the baked mac and cheese if you wanted to make it a little fancier and have that crispy topping. Um, so my secret ingredient, um, which again, you can skip if you're not ready for it, is butternut squash. <laughs> So this is a really great way if you have picky kids in your family to get them to eat veggies, um, especially if you're using an orange cheese, which I am. It kind of blends right in with the cheese. You can't tell with the color. And the butternut's actually a pretty mild flavor. Um, 
So you can, you can tell it's there, but it's not overwhelming. Um, and the kids might not even notice. So it's just a cup um, and butternut squash has a ton of vitamin A. It also adds some more fiber, um, lots of good nutrients in there. So we don't need vitamin donuts. <laughs> we can get our vitamins from real food. Um, so this is, I recently discovered this at the grocery store. When I made this recipe in the past, I would um, get either the frozen or fresh butternut, boil it, let it cool, mash it. Um, and then I realized you can just buy pureed butternut squash and it's amazing. <laughs> Um, it's also, you can add butternut squash to, um, oatmeal and it's really delicious. Kind of like a pumpkin oatmeal, um, add it to soups. I actually add, um, a couple tablespoons of pumpkin to my smoothie in the morning. Awesome. Yeah. It's so like rich tasting and adds such good fiber and that vitamin A and just tastes like warm and nice and wintry. All right. So if you're not ready for the butternut squash, you can leave that out, um, but you'll barely notice the taste and it's a good way to make it a little more nutrient dense. Um, and then finally, add about four cups of che shredded cheese. I just used the pre-shredded um, cheddar cheese you could also do like a Gouda or Gruyere um, or even like a Velveeta or something like that. Um, and four cups of cheese looks like a lot. It's, it's um, a 16 ounce bag if you're doing the shredded cheese. But once it melts, um, it makes the perfect amount of sauce. Here's one. All right. So now I'm just gonna stir it all in get it all melty. I'll show you where my sauce is at. I need like a clear pot. That would be nice. All right. So you can see the cheese is starting to melt. Um, and you'd never know that there's butternut squash in there. All right. Any questions so far? So this made a nice thick sauce. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Um, and I'm gonna turn off the heat because my noodles are already hot and I'm gonna just stir those in. So with the whole wheat pasta, you can tell it's a little bit browner. Um, if you have picky kids who can tell that it's not their normal pasta and don't like the color, um, mask it with a sauce. So pre-mix it with a tomato sauce or um, a cheese sauce. So at least they give it a chance. Um, and you know, plain pasta is often villainized, but it's actually a pretty high protein food. Um, a serving of regular pasta has seven grams of protein. Um, so if your kids will only eat plain pasta, I wouldn't worry about it. All right. So I'm stirring it in the sauce. It makes a nice thick pasta sauce. Ooh. <laughs> I wish you could smell it. It smells amazing. <laughs> the last thing I'm going to add is some peas. I like to add some color in there. And of course, any opportunity to add more veggies. Um, this is just frozen peas. One of those 12 ounce packages that you can microwave um, in the bag, which I like. Um, and you can use canned peas. I just like the color and flavor better of frozen peas. Um, or fresh peas if you have the time <laughs> and have those accessible. Um, I 
Yeah. So if you wanted to make it a baked mac and cheese, um, preheat the oven to about 400 degrees, mix about a quarter cup of whole wheat breadcrumbs or some kind of cracker crumb um, with the same amount of olive oil. And then you can sprinkle that on top, maybe add a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, and that comes out really nice and feels a little fancier. Um, but I just like the stovetop version. Reminds me of, you know, Annie's mac and cheese, but a little bit healthier. We have the butternut squash in there, the peas and the whole wheat pasta. Um, so that's what it looks like. I'm gonna eat some when we're done. <laughs> um, any questions about that recipe? Um, I have a question. I Oh, and just by the way, everyone, you're muted, so you can go ahead and unmute yourself if you have a question. Um, what are your thoughts? I go back and forth on organic. Like, I know it's always better to buy organic, and then, like, sometimes the price point's a little too high. Like, what would you say about buying organic food? Um, if it's something that you really value, um absolutely go for it. Um, it can be really pricey and especially with things that are, so, you know, the, like the dirty dozen and, um, yeah. so things like bananas that are, um, in their package, <laughs> you know, they're, um, the part that you eat is not really affected by anything on it. Um, I wouldn't worry about, and I'm just a proponent of eating more vegetables. So if the price point is limiting, um, then I wouldn't worry about it, but it's all up to, you know, what you value and what's important to you. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Is there any nutrition goals that they're working on or thinking about? Yeah, go ahead, Richard. So um, what I hear is that there's not a lot of scientific data on organic food. As far as nutritionally? Mm -hmm. um, so I recently, recently meaning in the past like three years, <laughs> Um, read a study that compared the nutrient composition of like organic fruits and vegetables and their um, con conventional counterparts. And there wasn't a difference. Um, there can be a difference, a small difference in um, the time it was picked and the time you consume it. So that's where like local produce might have a teensy bit more um, nutritional value as far as the vitamins and minerals. But again, that's, it's really minuscule, the difference. Um, so any way that you can get your vegetables, go for it. Um, if um, choosing organic and shopping local is important to you, then that's so how you spend your money. So basically, going to a economic point of view, or econ economy point of view, economics, that the value for the dollar is more the marketing hype than anything else. The re are you saying the reason why? In, in other words, um, how much am I getting so-called that little edge with organic? Am I paying really the right amount of dollars for it or am I paying a lot for the, for the marketing hype? Um, it could be both. Um... As far as, you know, this type of organic product, um, I'd say a lot of it's more, you know, stop and shop brand of organic. Um, if you're buying like local organic produce, then um, it's obviously smaller scale production. So um, it just costs more to produce, but there are a lot of like really, smart marketing techniques to get us to buy these foods. Um, I mean, if, so this is organic whole wheat pasta is roughly the same price. It's a little bit more expensive than the standard pasta. It's not a very expensive food. Um, 
this is half the size and was more expensive than this. Um, so there's definitely a lot of incentives for companies to make organic trendy foods. <laughs> um, but no, it's an interesting topic for sure. So the, uh, to follow up the, and go to another area, mm -hmm. the, a lot of hype, or at least it seemed like there's a hype between a salmon caught in the wild versus one that's in the, uh, in mm -hmm. the uh, farm. And same thing with shrimp and other, now many other um, seafood uh, farm versus um, the ones that are caught in the wild. And there's a big uh, difference in terms of price. So has there been any scientific study that shows the wild salmon is a lot more nutritious than the, uh, the one that I found? Um, well, I know there's a difference in mercury levels, um, especially with um, the bigger fish um, and farmed versus wild. Um, I like to look at, I think it's the, the Seafood Watch website that talks about like endangered fish and um, gives some guidance on uh, purchasing seafood in that sense. Um, but as far as nutrition, um, I know the fat content can vary a little bit um, and the mercury content. Um, but if you think about their lifestyle um, in a farm situation versus wild, um, they're more, I guess, confined to a like a closed space. Um, so they're not confined. It's a it's a very very large, uh, yeah, enclosed, very very large. You know, if you if um, if you kind of coast along the coast of Nova Scotia, there's many of those yeah. uh, enclosures, and they're pretty good size. They're yeah. well fed. They don't have yeah. to fight no. for their food. I think um, it's more about the like population density, um, but I think, yeah, I haven't heard too much about um, like the specific nutritional differences. So, so you would think that fatty content is probably higher in the wild salmon or less? Um, I, I don't remember specifically. Um, I would guess less but that is just me speculating but, but that's where the omega-3 come from exactly so it's a healthy fat um mm. so we like our salmon fatty <laughs> I, i'm just curious because yeah think, no that's a really interesting thought i mean that's always been when you see the um, various uh, promotions you know it's all about mm -hmm. uh, this is quite wild therefore it's right. going to cost you another two dollars three dollars more per pound or whatever well we're so spoiled here with lots of local seafood <laughs> they're wild <well> quick <laughs> they're definitely wild <laughs> yeah for sure well and that goes back to um the part where you talked about ethics um you know like nutritional that if it's coming down just to the science of nutritional value it's about the same and then you think of like how you know the farmers and where it comes from and is it local and you know what are you willing to pay right does that make sense yeah definitely karen did you have something to say i saw you unmute yourself oh you may not <laughs> oh yeah no you. i'm good thank you okay um any other thoughts everyone Well, good. Did you have anything else to add, Alice, before we wrap up? I don't think so. Um, this is great. Thanks for listening to me ramble on about nutrition and um, <laughs> watching me make this mac and cheese that I will enjoy. Um, <laughs> hi, Becky. <laughs> I, I wish I knew you were coming. I would have made something different. <laughs> We've made that before. <laughs> That's okay. We love that recipe. Well, this time I made it with peas. <laughs> but I'm also doing some, I'm doing classes for the salt marsh um, about once a month, which has been really fun. 
Um, and I'm soon to be doing some teen classes and some classes through WIC. Um, so if anyone wants to join me on those platforms, you're more than welcome. Um, but this has been a blast and I'm looking forward to being a participant in future classes. This is great. This is <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, and if there's anything new that comes out or you wanna do, give me a shout and we'll, yeah. we'll get you back online or hopefully back in the building soon. Oh my gosh, imagine. <laughs> <Our great hall. laughs> it's kind of more fun when we can like cook together. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's kind of the bonus food. here because we don't have a kitchen at the library. Um, yeah. Well, we have it, but it's just for stuff. But, um, but where we can do it virtually, we've had people kind of kicking in their own homes and we're kind of watching. Oh, that's fun, yeah. yeah, awesome. So well, this is including great. me, this is fun. Yeah. Um, and feel free to, I'll, I'll send you my email if anyone wants my email with questions or interesting topics. I want to go look about <laughs> at um, the different, the nutritional difference between wild and fresh salmon, wild caught and farmed salmon. And do you mind sending us your PowerPoint? Is that okay? Oh yeah, definitely. And I can oh, share. Thank you. I was going to ask if you would do that. Definitely. Yeah, because there was a lot of good information and charts and everything on that. Yeah, and the well, links were good more too. time, I'm obviously a nutrition nerd, so I love talking about nutrition. So feel free to hit me up with questions. And... All right, great. And everyone, next week we have um, Lydia Sussick is going to do um, a demonstration on cooking uh, soup and winter salads. So she's going to give us a great soup base that I think she's going to do a vegetarian and a um, chicken version. Um, so that'll be the same time, same place next Monday. So you can sign up for that. And then we have a few other things coming up. Um, we'll have this every week. So please come back. Thank you. All right. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks. Great Good night. night. Good night. Bye.